If the mind were a garden, uh, we have three ways to be with it. We can just look at it, we can pull weeds, or we can plant flowers. In essence, in three movements, we can let be, let go, let in. All right. Mindfulness can be present in all three cases. In other words, we can be mindful of pulling weeds, for example, helping ourselves to be less anxious or angry, and we can also be mindful when we are planting flowers, as it were. In other words, helping ourselves become more, help us become happier, more warm-hearted, or putt more effectively. Uh, so being able to be attentive to what we're doing, which is the essence of mindfulness, is incredibly helpful because from the standpoint of what scientists call experience-dependent neuroplasticity, while neurons that fire together wire together throughout the entire nervous system, they do so preferentially for what's in the field of focused attention. In other words, if you want to build structure in your brain, which is the neurology, if you will, of uh, learning, if you want to build structure in your brain, you have to sustain attention to something. Attention is an effect like a combination spotlight and vacuum cleaner. The problem is most people don't have very good control over that spotlight. Uh, so if you want to get better at golfing uh, or your putting game, let's say, uh, being able to sustain attention to what's not working well, in other words, the weeds, and also sustain attention to what could go better, which is to say planting flowers, is, is foundational for helping your own brain learn. I'm in this vast space of awareness, there's a traditional metaphor that uh, if you take a spoonful of salt and pour it into a cup of water, stir it and drink it, it'll taste terrible. But if you take the same amount of salt, which means the same amount of self-criticism or the same amount of worry or the same amount of grumbling anger at the people you live with or work with or sleep with, uh, and you put that in a large bucket of clean water, stir it around and then pull out a cup and drink the cup, you'll hardly taste the salt at all. Awareness, open awareness, is the great big clean bucket of water in which we put a little bit of salt. If we're absorbed with the salt, we're caught up in it, right? Then we're gonna feel horrible. But if we can observe it in this vast space of awareness um, and without trying to intervene, that itself can often, that makes things better and sometimes can reduce, let's say, the self-criticism. You know, we observe its characteristics, we see that it's impermanent, it's compounded, it's empty of any absolute self-existence. That alone can sometimes help untangle these neurotic habits, if you will. On the other hand, often it's not enough. Uh, we probably all know uh, people who've been meditating for a long time who are very open and mindful and are still neurotic and mean and they kick the dog and not good. As they say in the monastery, think you're so enlightened, go home for the holidays, right? So then we need to roll up our sleeves and engage, for example, what the Buddha talked about in the Eighth Elem, in the Noble Eightfold Path, the realm of wise effort, where again, we pull weeds and plant flowers in the garden of the mind. So through mindfulness, as the negative factors get removed or peeled off, it's kind of like sunlight, as it were, burning off clouds um, so that the sun that was always there can finally start shining through. Um, in the same way, mindfulness can clear away the dark clouds, if you will, of you know, greed, hatred, and delusion, and heartache so that our naturally uh, loving uh, qualities can really shine forth. So in that sense, mindfulness can really be an aid to compassion. I think also by its nature, mindfulness through this disidentifying process and through the natural movement of the spotlight of attention to grow wider and wider and wider and wider, uh, mindfulness can take us out into a sense of the wider world, a larger sense of our relationships with others, a larger sense of the natural world altogether in terms of life, the physical universe, even out into very above my pay grade matters of questions of the ultimate transcendental, the ultimate nature of everything. And that itself takes us into a sense that widens the circle of us to expand bigger and bigger and bigger so that everything eventually gets included in the circle of us. Uh, it reminds me of this quote from John Muir, to paraphrase slightly, when I look out at the universe, I find myself hitched to everything, hitched to everything. In the same way, mindfulness naturally moves us into this wider and wider, if, to use your word, allocentric view of things in which we feel hitched to everything. And that naturally helps us feel related to everything. And since we're related to everything, since in a sense we are everything, and what we do with everything affects us, that naturally moves us to a caring, 
sympathetic warm-heartedness. You know, karma sometimes is defined as hitting golf balls in a tiled shower. It really comes back. When you start realizing that us is them, you are naturally moved to treat them a lot better and thus fuel compassion. Mindfulness is absolutely fundamental to all kinds of psychological abilities, and it's fundamental to re-sculpting your own brain. Because the process of the building or changing of neural structure um, is radically heightened for what's in the field of focused attention. If you don't have control, therefore, over that combination spotlight and vacuum cleaner, you're not able yourself to direct the gradual process of structure building inside your own brain. So mindfulness is absolutely fundamental to that. And it's foundational to uh, mental health. Mindfulness is foundational to being a good partner or a good parent or a good colleague, a good friend, uh, because otherwise you just can't manage your reactions. You're not even aware of your own reactions to what's happening. Mindfulness is fundamental to creative pursuits. You have to be able to sustain focus um, in a relaxed and open way to whatever it is, the music, the art, uh, the business problem you're grappling with. Uh, mindfulness is really fundamental. So I want to really extol the value of mindfulness. The second point to make is that there's a lot of research these days that shows that a little bit of mindfulness training, even to the point of just eight minutes a day in a row, more is better. There is a dosing effect. It's like building a muscle, you know, more is better. That said, eight minutes or more a day can grow measurable neural structure. You can thicken layers of neural cortex uh, with sustained mindfulness practice. Um, and as you build that muscle, in a sense, inside your own brain, it can lift more weight. Its capacities grow. So have no doubt that little mindfulness practices sustained over time can add up to big changes for the better over the course of your life.